you take over. Okay. So I'm Katie Allen, and I uh, have a, a strong background in agriculture. I think it's it's kind of funny. Um, I always say my dad's a farmer and my mom's a nurse, and so I really I work in healthcare and agriculture both currently. Um, I'm the executive director of the Norton Regional Health Foundation, which is located in Norton, Kansas. And there I work within the Norton County Hospital. That's where the foundation is located. And I do grant writing. I do community relations, advertising for the foundation and Norton County Hospital. And then I'm also a freelance writer and editor for a number of other academic research uh, publications as well as agricultural publications. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lindsay Graber Rumpf, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at Livestock Marketing Association. If you're not familiar, we are the nation's leading trade association for livestock marketing businesses. We represent about 75% of livestock auction markets in the United States. So our trade, trade association has a full book of membership services for our members, and a big piece of my job is managing um, the, the communications part of that service. And, and part of that is the internal communications, managing the news and information that we get out to our members, but also managing the external communications, so more on the public relations front. My day-to-day -day job varies quite a bit. Um, I, I'm sure most, most like uh, you all, your, your days can vary in what you have to do and you wear many hats. So um, I do everything from policy communications to um, public relations with some of our events, including the World Livestock Auctioneer Championship, and then marketing for all of our, our services for our members as well. So we decided on our presentation we'd like to talk about the return on investment, specifically on Facebook, is what we'll talk about today. Uh, Lindsay and I are both uh, Texas Tech Red Raiders, so um, Lindsay, I know it's, I got my coffee cup here, it's my Texas Tech coffee cup, um, coffee and collaboration, just because we have that background and, and interest there. So, um, But we talked about this ahead of time, and we wanted to talk about Facebook, return on investment. Um, I'll talk about the tangible benefits, so those benefits that you can back up by data, um, talk about uniform branding and messaging across platforms, uh, and also when you're using your advertising and marketing on a number of other mediums, print, uh, broadcast, et cetera, and so how to really hone in the messaging and branding to make it work on social media as well. And then financial resources, talk about sponsored posts and the benefits there. And I'll, I'll take it from Katie toward the end and talk about intangible ROI. What are some of the things beyond just those numbers you can grasp that make um, having a social media presence worth it to your company or your association? Um, I think one big piece of that is for all of us in AgCom, we know that we wear lots of hats. We have lots of things going on. Why is it worth it to, to take more time and energy from our staff to devote to social media? And then also just a, a piece here, don't miss the forest for the trees. We know that those... Metrics are really important, and we're all driving for more likes and more engagement, but um, there's some other things that, that are really great benefits and, and some of that return on investment for your time that come with doing social media as well. So talking about uniformity across mediums, I do wear a lot of hats in my role here at Norton County Hospital and the Norton Regional Health Foundation. I've done that in several other roles that I have been in since I graduated uh, college. And so, um, you know, I try to use social media in the best way possible. I'm in no means a social media expert, but I wanted to talk about some things that have worked for me. And so in terms of being uniform, uh, imagery and content are both very important. Um, I think it's important to help people find you and make it easy for people to find you. And so I'll show some examples later on, but our profile and banner or cover photos are similar across our platforms. Here at the hospital, I use uh, Facebook and Twitter, and so we have um, a similar branding and showing those specific pictures on both platforms. I also use uh, the same kind of imagery and other ads as well, and so it really helps um, with people identifying us. 
The consistent branding is important as well, um, just in having our logo consistent across platforms. Content, um, when you're using content for campaigns, for example, um, you can integrate that into your social media as well as other media, and so you can change up your banners and cover photos and things to highlight a campaign, and I usually do the same kind of campaigns when I'm doing the radio advertising or the print advertising and just make it all uh, integrated and hit people, hit the audience in various ways, uh, making sure that they're getting that consistent messaging. Um, also, we use a new schedule, um, not here necessarily at the hospital because I'm the only one who really manages the social media here, but I'll show an example of what I used at K-State to make sure that if you have multiple staff who are working on your social media that you're in sync with one another and kind of uh, have a similar voice along the line. And then also um, creating a calendar too is very helpful as you're going along. I usually create a calendar well in advance, uh, about a year in advance, and I add to it, and I'll show an example of that as well. So here's just some examples of the, the imagery as I talked about. At the top, um, those are the pages I manage right now with Norton County Hospital, and so we use the same banner um, on Facebook and Twitter. Our website has a similar look and feel, feel as well. Uh, and then I also t wanted to talk about my experiences at K-State because we integrated campaigns into our social media pages, and so they have a campaign going on right now that uh, I pulled from the, their Facebook page. Um, so they have that similar campaign across platforms. And then they also do co-branding. If you are in a field where you have other sites other than yourself, um, you have other offices, it's nice to have that consistent branding and give offices, other offices and outreach areas an opportunity to have that branding um, and make it easy for them because, again, that just shows that you're part of something bigger. And so I showed K-State Research and Extension as well as the Twin Creeks District. That would be the district that's located here in uh, Norton County and surrounding counties. And so that shows um, that they're part of K-State Research and Extension. They also have a banner photo, cover photo that um, is a spring theme, and we made those for different extension offices across the state with the, the logo appropriately used. And um, just, again, just showing that we're part of something bigger, and it makes it look nice and clean to the users. Here's an example of the new schedule that we used at K-State. And we found this really beneficial because we had multiple staff working on writing, editing, and also on social media. And so with this new schedule, it accompanied every story that we did, every news release. And so we would have the headline, the writer and editor, where the file was located. Um, then we also had a photo location and a cut line for that photo. And so um, every story had to have a photo, and that was helpful, too, for social media purposes. Then we had our method of distribution, um, just showing the different listservs that we felt were appropriate to send to, send that particular story to. We included web page keywords for our website, and then at the bottom was social media, and if we recommended that it go beyond our social media to the university's social media accounts. Here we were able to write our own Facebook post, our own tweet, uh, use appropriate hashtags, uh, and then we also had Pinterest and YouTube. If there was a video to accompany the news release, we could include that as well. And, you know, we served various roles, and so sometimes I was the writer, sometimes I was the editor, sometimes I posted on social media. And when I'm reading these constantly, among, you know, the ones that I did, as well as some of the other staff, we kind of get a similar voice going and kind of get a sync going. And that's the, the plan all along, is just to make that effective on social media. Here's the calendar example. This is very um, straightforward, very simple. But like I said, I plan these out a year in advance, and I do it by week. Um, so usually at the end of the year, I'm planning ahead for the next year's social media calendar. 
when working in healthcare, it's really important because we have a lot of special weeks and months dedicated to certain awareness. Um, like you'll see, you know, April 2nd is National Autism Awareness Month. You know, we, we post, we try to recognize those months um, and what we're doing here at the hospital um, to recognize those months. Having this planned out a year in advance just makes it much more simple for me when I'm uh, pulling it up every day and uh, planning my social media. And I add to it on a regular basis as well. I do use this every day. Um, and it is very simple. It works for me. I'm the only person who really manages the social media accounts for uh, the hospital and foundation. But if I had to change it up, and I think as we get into talking about sponsored posts, I think in the future, maybe coming up with something that allows me to show the metrics in an easy form uh, with my sponsored posts and my reach, because I want to see, I know I can pull those up on Facebook at any time, but I w would like to see that incorporated into my calendar as well. So moving on to sponsored posts, um, as many of you know, Facebook this year changed a lot of its algorithms to highlighting family and friends in the newsfeed as well as those engaging posts. Um, they want posts that are kind of a two-way communication, especially on the business side. They don't want businesses to just throw out information to audiences. They want businesses to engage their audiences. So having uh, comments and shares on posts is important. Um, and also pay to play. I mean, you have to um, kind of think about a strategy maybe on the sponsoring side too, to get in that news feed and hopefully enhance the engagement as well. And so I found that the benefits of sponsoring posts is we can reach specified audiences um, working in healthcare, you know, there's a lot of different services that we provide that have very specific audiences. And so, like our labor and delivery services, I'm able to do sponsored posts on Facebook that are targeting women ages, for instance, 18 to 45, uh, 30 mile radius or 60 mile radius from Norton, Kansas, um, because we are the only hospital within an hour that delivers babies here. So, um, I've used it a lot for our OB services. As an example, um, we're able to see data to show the progress of the post and the success of it at the end. Facebook provides that on a regular basis, and so I found that very beneficial. It's minimal cost, um, which I also uh, feel like it's useful in that regard. You're able to really target in and hone in on your audience for a low cost. And then I've also found that any post that I sponsor I get more likes to my page, and usually a lot more likes to my page. Um, so you have the potential to increase your likes and follows and hopefully get a, a nice following on your Facebook page as well. Some tips for making your sponsored posts successful. Uh, images work really well, but don't include text necessarily with your images, as in infographics. Uh, Facebook doesn't like that too well if you include a lot of text on your photos. Um, I've tried to sponsor infographics and I've been shut down. So um, that's something you really got to get good imagery and then include it, uh, include the content with the post itself. Um, I use Facebook ads in addition to other ads on various other media, as I mentioned. And so using social media is just a tool in your toolbox to reach different audiences and get the message out in different ways. Um, pay at least a dollar per day to find some success in reaching your targeted audiences. And then I also drive traffic to my website as much as possible. Um, and I'll show you in the analytics how that's worked out for us. But I always provide a call to action to the user to go learn more information. So here's an example of something I did at K-State, um, we wanted to highlight a publication that was released that talked about differences in labels on meat. And so we did a series called Meet the Labels and um, included information about what each label on a meat package might mean to the consumer, just providing that education. 
Um, for a sponsored ad, Facebook wouldn't like you to include an infographic with all of that text on it. However, if you wanted to put something like on the left-hand side of this slide, um, showing meat on a grill and saying it's grilling season, do you know your meat labels, do you know what raised without antibiotics means, um, and start a conversation. Again, if you ask a question like that, that, enc that encourages engagement. Therefore, uh, your post, even if it's not sponsored necessarily, um, would have a, a larger reach in the news feed because you're creating engagement. And so that's kind of a do and don't if you're going to sponsor, put a little money behind a, behind a post. Here's an example of our Facebook page, just looking at the insights, I wanted to highlight the top. So there's a boosted post up there at the top. It was a, a labor and delivery OB ad. Um, I put a little bit of money behind it, $30. And you can see that I had thousands of people reached and you know over 600 engagements versus some of our posts that didn't have any sponsorship behind them. You know, we're talking hundreds of reach and um, just a few engagements on those. And so it does benefit you if you have a little bit of money in your budget to put some money behind any of your news posts that you feel are are important um, to get out there to specific audiences. One thing that I wanted to highlight too on this slide is, I think it's the second post from the bottom, uh, there's a post about our occupational therapist highlighting occupational therapy month and I didn't put any money behind this particular post but it did get a lot of reach and engagement compared to some of the other posts around it. And so, um, you know, highlighting a human interest type story and a person, someone people know around here in the community, also uh, whose staff know really well and they share the post, your staff can be a valuable resource, even if they aren't necessarily part of your communications and marketing team, um, if you get staff to engage and share, you know, those are going to go into news feeds of their friends. And so um, just kind of creating an engagement maybe beyond your communications and marketing team can help you as well. And I wanted to briefly talk about Google Analytics. And if you are part of your web management team, I would hope that you would use something like Google Analytics to just see how you're doing on a, from a digital footprint standpoint. Um, like I highlighted the occupational therapy post, you can see that we had a jump uh, on our website on April 9th, which is the same day that post went out. And so I saw this initially, and then in the next slide, you can see how that related to the occupational therapy post on Facebook. So I'm highlighting like the last two boxes on this slide, but if you the, the very last box, um, the occupational therapy month story was the top page viewed uh, just beyond our index page, our home page, and so it shows that social media and Facebook was driving people to our website and to that particular story uh, for a period of time after that Facebook post was uh, sent out. And so I can see that by do, using good imagery and uh, linking that story on Facebook, I was able to drive traffic to my website and that particular page. And then the other thing I wanted to highlight too is uh, the second to last box, the very last box on the top. It shows you where people are logging on to your website from. And so, uh, you can see it's like 54% from a mobile device and 42% from desktop, uh, about 5% from a tablet. And so this is all the more reason why your website should be dynamic on mobile platforms. I see this increasing more and more over time as people are logging on from mobile devices. And so we access our social media from our phones. We're also clicking on links from social media and accessing our websites. And so we did a, a new website launch that allowed us to hone in on those uh, 
mobile devices and making it compatible on mobile devices. So that's very important too. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about, in addition to you know engaging your employees and making them part of your communications and marketing team even beyond your team, is that you know it's it's really important that we as communications and marketing professional professionals are engaging um, with ourselves from our personal pages with uh, different users and things. I was just at a conference last week on mark and we talked about marketing to millennials and I see this I'm a millennial myself you know I see this um, present in all of my Facebook feeds is people asking for recommendations on things. Um, you know, can you recommend a, a doctor for me? Can you recommend uh, a place where I could go buy this item? Um, we're seeing that being driven a lot on Facebook. And um, so I would encourage you also to think about how you as a professional and you as an organization and your staff can monitor that as well and help increase um, reach on your page as well as increase business or your services or um, having more people read your news. I think that that's really important to just monitor even beyond your pages. Okay, so Katie talked more about the tangible benefits of social media. And I'm going to speak to the intangible benefits. So one of the things I mentioned earlier is that being an ad comm, we all know that in our professions, a lot of times we're a small staff, um, sometimes limited on, an, on staff resources. I think um, we all wear a lot of hats, so what's one more? Um, add in social media, another iron in the fire. Um, and for us here at LMA, social media has been part of something that our association's done for quite some time. When I first started working on um, social media for LMA, we had a blog, um, two Twitter accounts, and a Facebook page, and that's changed quite a bit. We now are um, focusing our efforts on a Facebook page, one Twitter account. We eliminated the one for the World Livestock Auctioneer Champion, and then we also eliminated that blog, and instead we, we focus more on the LMA Facebook, the LMA Twitter, and we've also added Instagram, and here and there we've done, done a few things on Snapchat. Um, we don't have a Snapchat account, but we, we've done some Snapchat takeovers, and we've also also played around with some Snapchat filters, so a little bit in Snapchat as well. Um, and, and the reason why I mention this is, for me, that's that number one bullet on the right-hand side, budgeting time. We don't have a lot of time, or I don't have a lot of time. I am, as I like to say here at LMA, Marketing and Communications Department, party of one. Um, it's just me here to manage everything that we do, all communications, including social media. So it's really important for me to budget my time and figure out if I'm going to do social media, where is it going to matter the most? What social media accounts am I going to get the most bang for my buck in terms of the time that I'm spending? So after studying those different social media channels, I realized we've got the most traction with our LMA Facebook page. Um, we've got a little bit with our Twitter, and we've started to see, see some growth in our Instagram as well. But really, um, our audiences for our Facebook page and our Instagram are completely different. And so we, we started to gear our messages for those social media channels and, and our posts a little bit different after realizing that sometimes what works on Facebook doesn't necessarily work on Instagram and vice versa. Um, so, so for us, it's a big piece of that's really figuring out where, where is it really going to matter the most in those social media accounts and then focusing our attention there. Um, budgeting time is really important. We all know that, that we've only got so many hours in a day. And so to figure out where we need to spend those is, is the most important. Um, Katie touched on making a social media calendar, and, and I won't go over that again, but just really briefly, that fits into to my thoughts on budgeting time. For me, it's really helpful in terms of figuring out how much time I have to spend that week or that month or even that day and what piece of that, that time slot I need to use on social media. So for me, I also make a social media calendar, helps me stay organized, helps me um, prioritize my days in terms of the, the smaller amount of time that I have if I'm going to devote some of it to social media. Um, on that social media calendar, I do holidays and our events is where I really start out with and then I build from there. Um, to be really honest, I use my Outlook calendar. It's something that I've got with me all the time. It's on my phone, it's on my iPad, it's on my computer. And I've also got that synced with a Google Calendar. The Google Calendar sync is something that really matters social media-wise because 
We use the Google Calendar to schedule all of our appearances for the World Livestock Auctioneer Champion. Sometimes I feel like I serve as that champion's agent in terms of managing their media, their appearances, and, and when they're going to speak somewhere and who's, who's going to need to know about it. So if I've got all those events as they're scheduled pop up from Google Calendar synced to my Outlook Calendar, then I can schedule a social media post uh, plugging when that champion's going to be at what market you know, next week. Um, as part of a, a little social media campaign we do on Facebook called Where's the World Champ Wednesday. We also have holidays um, that, that we look forward to, not just the you know, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, all of those, but then some of the things like National Auctioneer's Day. One of the things that's been helpful for me in terms of budgeting my time is scheduling posts. Um, I use a platform called Mfluence. It's a, a company that's based here in Kansas City. And um, with that, I'm able to schedule posts on Facebook and Twitter. They don't have the Instagram capacity yet. But, but um, that being said, I don't schedule a whole lot of posts on Instagram, mostly because I'm starting to gear the, the messages there a little bit differently. So they're not necessarily as streamlined with Facebook and Twitter. Um, scheduling the post in advance, especially for holidays, really helps in terms of those busier seasons. You can just knock it all out, get everything done in one day, focus your efforts on getting those posts scheduled. Um, the other thing I would mention on the time and how you make it worth it and make it all fit is remember to be a little bit flexible, both in timing and equipment. Um, timing, I'd say, um, you know, things can happen on the fly, so you've got to pop up and do something social media on the fly. We've done some, some experimenting with some Facebook Lives at some of our events that we've had going on, and that's something that, hey, we've got something really cool going on. Let's jump on a Facebook Live and talk about it. Um, equipment as well, um, especially for the Facebook Lives, that's where I've learned I've got to be a little bit flexible. I have an Osmo Plus that I like to use to do some videoing of events, some Facebook Lives and things like that. But, um, you know, last week we were in D.C. for our fly-in, and... It wasn't really conducive to tote my Osmo Plus all over Capitol Hill from meeting to meeting, so I just used my iPhone. I think that that's something really easy just to fit it in. Everybody's always got their phone on them. iPhones these days have really great cameras, so I think that's a really good way to just to slide that social media in with what you're doing. You've got your phone in your back pocket. Pull it out. You can snap a picture. You can do a Facebook Live, and you don't necessarily have to carry around all that fancy equipment as well. Same thing goes on the picture side. At convention, we have an official photographer. Sure, I like to use their, their pictures from their nice big DSLR cameras, but sometimes if you've got something going on spur of the moment and you want to just take a picture like that in a couple seconds, just pull out your iPhone and grab it to post on social media. So I guess the, the takeaway there is budgeting your time. You can budget it um, as much as you want to help, but remember you've got to be flexible and sometimes you've got to do things on the fly. Okay, so don't miss the forest for the trees. I think Katie had some really good points on metrics. We watch our metrics quite a bit, and, and that's a big thing, you know. But big picture-wise, what are we really doing here with social media? We're all driving for the engagement um, and those numbers that can prove, you know, especially to our C-suite, why we're doing it, why we're investing the time and the money, things that I look at every year as part of my marketing and communications annual report. Um, but, but I think another big thing that I always like to throw in there is there are some really good things that you can accomplish outside of, of just looking at those numbers. And, and we'll run through those. I've got some bullets here, and then we're going to jump into some examples. So number one, build your brand. Um, social media, it's about what you say and how you say it in a couple of different ways. Um, for us, you know, I do all of our social media posting. I've got some other, other staff cross-trained to do it if I need a little help here and there. Um, and so I always try to make sure that the messaging is streamlined so it always comes from one voice. And not just from, from that standpoint of it all sounds the same, but, but what are we saying? What are we talking about? What's important to us that we're going to talk about that we're going to give that nod to on social media, something that matters to us to put out there? Um, the other thing is, is it goes back to some of Katie's comments about branding. Um, try to use the same fonts, the same look, the same feel to all of our things so that, so that everything that we put out there on social media looks back to us at LMA and says, this is who we are, this is our look, this is our feel. Um, reputation management's a big one. I, I have a, a little bullet underneath there that says the good, the bad, the ugly. So for us, I think part of our reputation is, is who are we and what do we care about? Um, what, what are some of the good things that our association's doing? What are the good things in the world that we care about? And then some of the bad and the ugly. Um, we've unfortunately a time or two had to use our social media and some reputation management on the crisis comm side. Um, 
For us, we're in animal agriculture, which means we're not immune to animal rights activists. And unfortunately, we've had some of our member markets targeted by some undercover animal rights activists. Some of them have, have garnered quite a bit of media attention. And so for us, um, you know, at LMA, there, there were a few times that we were specifically called out as the National Trade Association that works with the livestock auction markets. And so we felt like we needed to step up and have a response. And part of that response that we put out there was on social media. If you watch, it seems like a lot of times when there's something negative that happens animal handling wise, animal welfare wise, there will be videos or pictures on Facebook and those posts will go viral. And so we knew that in that in that event, people weren't weren't maybe going to jump on our website first and foremost to see what we had to say in response. But instead, they're already on Facebook. They're seeing what a PETA, you know, any of those types of groups, HSUS are posting. So why not? look up, you know, LMA and see what they have to say. So we posted our, our statement there, and then we could manage a little bit of that conversation on our own page in terms of the responses people had to, to our statement. Um, another reason why, you know, I think, you know, there's a good intangible benefit or why we use social media and I use it is just to keep an ear to the ground. I like to see and hear what's going on out there in the world. Um, livestock auction markets work with all different species. They're, they're all sold through livestock auction markets. So we've got a vested interest in all the different animal species, all the different industries across the U.S. And there's lots of things going on out there. And, it, and for me, it's just a way to, to keep an ear to the ground to see not only what different industries are doing or what they're saying about what's going on, but also just to see what you know, what people in our industry are talking about. Um, transportation has been a really big issue for us in livestock marketing. Um, if you're familiar with the ELDs and the hours of service issues with livestock haulers, that's been a big issue for livestock markets. We don't necessarily represent the truckers of the world, but all of those truckers um, that, that work in livestock hauling a lot of times are hauling to and from livestock auction markets. So for me, I've been able to keep an ear to the ground to see what the livestock haulers are saying um, and also to be able to put out information to them so they know what we're doing to work on the issue as well. Um, the other thing is, is it's a good way for us to tap into some new audiences. Um, the World Livestock Auctioneer Championship is the biggest event that LMA hosts every year. And it was created back in the 60s with the original intention of driving interest and, and attention to the auction method of selling. And what's really interesting is that that still holds true today. In 2018, um, we still use the WLAC as a way to drive interest and excitement to our industry, which is selling livestock by auction method at a fixed facility auction market. And so the way that we've used that WLAC to drive interest and attention to what we're doing as a greater whole in the livestock marketing industry is that we've really kept all of our news and information from the association, including WLAC related, in our LMA Facebook page. Sure, we could create something separate for the World Livestock Auctioneer Championship, but it kind of defeats the purpose. We've got a really great following and a really great audience who's interested in the WLAC, but because they're following our page for WLAC News, they're also seeing all of the news we're putting out there on what our association is doing and what our association cares about in, also in, in addition to that WLAC. So, so you know, we've used um, some of our different events that might have a little bit more um, public recognition to help drive some attention to other things we've got going on here at LMA. So here's some examples that I thought we could go through. Um, one of the intangible benefits of social media is it's a way for you to show who you are, um, a little bit of a show and tell. So um, I grabbed all these examples from our Facebook. It's our biggest platform, the one that we, we do the most on and we get the most traction on. Um, so a couple of things that, that we're showing is who are we? Um, you know, we, livestock auction markets, we are a, an industry that sells more than $40 billion in livestock every year. So I think one of the things that I've learned that's helped, um, you know, for us is tell who we are. Some people might not know who LMA is or, or what our association does, what we represent, but by using some statistics and these graphics that people like to share, um, that $40 billion number is a big graphic. We saw a lot of shares from our member livestock auction markets. It's helping get that word out showing who we are. Um, the other thing is, is um, we have this little picture that we put up for National Siblings Day. Um, we like to play those social media holiday games um, every now and then just for a little fun thing, just to show, you know, we're not all business. We like to have a little bit of fun every now and then. So we have this cute little picture of some of our staffers 
at an auction market and decide to throw it up. Um, a little back end messaging we did on that was um, we played on the LMA family. A big piece of us is that we really feel like LMA as an association and our members, we are a family. It's a family atmosphere. Um, while our markets in some areas are competitors, we're also still just one big family. So we, we played on that for National Siblings Day. Next slide. All right, another piece of who you are, show and tell. So we use social media to show um, a little bit who we are and what we care about. Um, this is a piece I talked about earlier. The wildfires in Oklahoma this year, also um, they, you know, they really ramped up last year too. Kansas, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Texas, we thankfully didn't have any of our member markets burned down. However, a lot of their members who, or a lot of their customers who sell and buy at our member markets were affected. And so LMA worked with those markets on raising funds for the producers. So um, this year we've started to put out some more information about ways that people can donate to the relief funds. Last year we tried to plug every rollover cap auction that we knew a, an auction market in the United States was having. We ended up having member markets and I think 12 different states have rollover auctions. So for us, it was it was our way of helping get the word out that, that those markets were um, helping to contribute to those relief funds and, and not just something that we care about as an association, but all of our members across the United States care about as well. Something a little bit more fun, um, Leroy Van Dyke's song, The Auctioneer. Um, it's kind of been a little bit of an anthem for Livestock Auctioneer. It's a big piece of our industry. Um, we shared Farm Talk Newspaper's article about um, about that song, how it got its start in agriculture, and it was just a really fun little piece that we could do to throw out there to show, um, hey, this, is, this has been a neat song for our industry. Here's a little bit of background info on it. All right, so another another way that I think it, you know a good intangible benefit of ROI is just to spread your business. It's a good way to talk a little bit more about what you've got going on. Um, we, we like to put our, um, or share the link for our press releases that we've sent out on our Facebook page. And then also um, we've done a little bit of mini campaign about a policy initiative we have right now, um, Dealer Statutory Trust. And so we've been doing some testimonials that are video testimonials and we preface them with some graphics just to, just to build a little bit of attention or a little bit of uh, excitement for the testimonial coming up. And so it's one of the things that, that we do to talk about what we've got going on, spreading our business, one of those things, just getting a little bit more attention to what we've got here, a little bit more awareness to our association business. And then the, the other thing that I think is a good intangible benefit of social media is it's a good way to plug your events. Um, there's a picture that you'll see at an auction market block. Um, that was a picture we took on the fly, I had my iPhone out. We were filming a segment for a WLAC TV show. It's really neat because I think it, it shows um, our followers, you're, you're right there in the moment. We're filming it, you can see what's going on. And also, hey, hold the date, we're, we're gonna be airing our show in June. Um, nice way to build a little bit of excitement. People know what to look for. Um, all the Tom Fry, Crest and Livestock fans of the world um, can see see that, that that's going to be part of a segment coming up. Also, our, our little campaign for our Where's the World champion. I think that, um, you know, lots of associations, lots of companies have events going on, different things going on. It's a great way just to put the word out there and remind people. I think for me, I get up every morning, just like most of you, scroll my Facebook feed, like to see what's, what's going on in the world. And, and if you get a reminder what's coming up, it's a good way to do that. All right, and I think lastly, um, just a good way to, to be a part of the community. For us, it's been really beneficial to, to be out there and, and have a presence that other people can tag us in. Um, we had an AFA tour here at LMA, and um, and for us, you know, it was it was great that LMA gave, or the AFA gave LMA the shout out, and for for our association, just to be there and be able to share it and say, hey, we're we're proud to work with you guys. Thanks for coming by. If we wouldn't have had a social media presence, we would have had no idea. Wouldn't have been able to put our own little stamp on it. And and it's just kind of one of those warm and fuzzy things. Hey, we're out there too. Um, you know, if you guys want to want to share a little picture or come into our office, we'll share it back. And and we're just out there, part of it. Um, we also had an article. Um, across the pond 
that was about um, livestock auction markets here in the United States here recently. And um, it was kind of neat that we, we got to expand our worldwide audience because we are part of that community, got to have our, our Facebook page out there. Well, thank you very much, guys. We really appreciate it. I see that we've got quite a few different names and some new faces on our call. And so if you guys want to feel free to shout out any questions you may have. We still have a few minutes left. Or if you want to ask it in the conversation tab, get typing. Okay, they're being quiet. Oh, here comes one. From um, Angie. Do you see that, Lindsay? I see that. Angie, we um we do every now and then. Um the one the one sponsorship post that we typically do are to plug our World Livestock Auctioneer Championship Championship show that's on RFD TV. Um for us, you know, it's a little bit tough when it comes to what else we would sponsor. Um, the WLAC is our biggest event of the year, and the World Livestock Auctioneer Championship show on RFD is a one-year, um, one-hour special, and it's the biggest, I think, PR effort that we have year-round. So for us, it's worth it to sponsor that. But beyond that, we haven't sponsored too much. Um, we don't, we don't sponsor our news. And the other thing, um, our smaller events where the champions going out and visiting local livestock auction markets, um, the sponsorship of those really comes from those individual markets who are plugging it to um, their local producers. And that's usually through the form of a radio ad or a print ad. Okay, so we have a couple more. Um, I'll ask them out loud just so people can hear them if they're watching. Um, so Diane asks, what will replace Facebook and when will it end up like MySpace? They may not even know what that is, Diane. I know what MySpace is. I had a MySpace. Um, you know, I, I think that's a good question, Diane. I I don't know what will replace Facebook. We've seen a lot different, at least for us, our Facebook audience is more of the, I'd say 30 to 60 range, um, whereas our Instagram audience is more of the college and high school kids. And I know that Instagram, um, I think for some has grown. I've, I've read a lot about um, people ditching Facebook for Instagram, but I don't see that so much as the, um, the older generations per se. Um, I think that there there will continue to be some frustration with Facebook. I mean, Katie talked a little bit about the change in the logarithm of that. Um, but I don't know. You know, our our um, Facebook presence has grown so much in the last five years that, um, and it continues to grow. I'm not sure I see it slowing down anytime soon, but um, I don't know. I'm, I know that's not really a good answer to your question. Katie, do you have any no, I, I would agree with that, Lindsay. Um, I looked recently, and Facebook currently has 2.2 billion active users, um, and that is just tremendous if you think about how many people are on Facebook. I will agree that I think that audiences are different. Uh, I think that you know younger people, I, I see this in my own family and my younger siblings. I mean, high school, college age, really going to Instagram uh, more so than Facebook and being more active on that. They really like the, the imagery there. Um, I don't think Facebook is going away anytime soon. I think that it'll constantly evolve to become different and keep up with the times. Um, I would be surprised if it ever fully went away like MySpace did. Um, Casey, I saw your question about a uh, decline in Twitter use from your audience. I don't know if you're asking Katie or I, but I will say um, Twitter for us, I wouldn't necessarily say that we've seen a decline, but we haven't seen a whole lot of growth. And to be really honest, where I find the most value in Twitter for us has to do with sharing our news, like sharing links to our press releases and sharing like, hey, happy new year post. And then more than that, though, the biggest usage we've got out of it is in our policy comm. 
Um, DC flying always seems to be a really big time for us in terms of Twitter. We see a lot of congressmen and women and their staffers hopping on, tweeting pictures out of their um, of either the congressman or woman meeting with our, our members, or, or we do the same. Um, when we introduced some legislation last fall, or we had we worked with um, a congressman to introduce some legislation that we had worked with them on. Um, we tweeted out some thank yous to all of the co-sponsors on that and saw a lot of traction from it. But really, um, that's the biggest usage we've got out of it. So not necessarily a decline, but I wouldn't say say really an increase either. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Um, I, I use Twitter a lot for sharing content uh, more so than posting. I do a lot of sharing on Facebook, but um, I do more original content on Facebook versus Twitter. I share a lot more on Twitter. Um, I think that that's kind of become like the retweeting, the sharing mechanism. Um, some people still prefer that over any other form, just that snappy, uh, quick post. But I, I still think that Facebook is, is the best use of our time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you see Art's question? Yeah, I see that uh, about rules against running ads. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I haven't had, I haven't run into any problems. I'll just say this on personal experience because I don't know if they have specific rules if you are constantly running multiple ads at one time. Um, I usually try to make it as part of a campaign that I'm doing at the time and, and again, using Facebook as a, as a tool among other mediums. So uh, I haven't run into any problems um, with them you know, running, I'll do maybe two or three ads at a given time. And the only time they've shut me down is when I've tried to sponsor infographics. Yeah. Um, Taylor, I see your question about liking other pages and reposting. So it's a little bit tricky when you're on Facebook. Um, there's an option when you go to a page, you can click to like it as a page. And that's the way that you need to do that. Um, the other thing is, is reposting some stuff. When you go to share, um, I always check to make sure that in the comment field it shows the LMA logo or, you know, I, I manage a couple of other different pages, but shows that logo in the comment field. So it says like commenting as Livestock Marketing Association um, if you're going to comment. And then if you're going to share, if you click to share, um, you can do share as a page. So you can do like Livestock Marketing Association sharing as Livestock Marketing Association. And that's the easiest way to get that done. Well, I just want to say thanks to both of you. We really appreciate you guys taking time. I know you're busy and it was worth the wait to find a date that worked for the both of you. So I really appreciate it. Uh, we try hard to be done as close to 1045 as we can to let people get on to their next meeting. But we will share this out um, as a video on YouTube. And if you guys have any further questions, I know that you can find Katie and Lindsay pretty easily on social media and they would be glad to help you guys out. Again, thanks for joining us. You guys were awesome. We appreciate it. Thank you. I enjoyed Thank it. You. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Thank you.